Hi guys, so today we're going to take a step back right to the beginning. Uh, we're going to go back to the basics and do some basic work on the fiddle. Okay, so what I'm going to go through today is um, the bow, the different parts of the bow. I'm going to go through the different parts of the fiddle. I am going to show you the rosin that I use. I'm going to show you how to rosin the bow and I'm going to show you how to tune your fiddle. And then I'm going to show you how to hold the bow and how to hold the fiddle. That's what I'll go through today. And then the next video, I will go through um, the notes on the fiddle. So I'll go through each of the strings and each of the notes on each of the strings. Okay. So today we're just going to through, go through the basics of the fiddle, um, parts of the fiddle, the parts of the bow, how to hold the fiddle, how to hold the bow, how to rosin your bow, and how to tune your fiddle. Okay. And that's what we're going to go through today how to hold it. Did I say that? Yeah, I did. Um, so we're going to start off with your bow. Now this this video I think will be really handy for those who are just starting off the instrument. So I hope this helps you if you're just learning to play it. Okay, so we're going to start with the bow. So I think that's the easiest one to start with first. Okay, so here we've got the this black bit here. This is the structure of your bow, the main part of your bow. This is the bow stick. Okay, so my one is black. There's other ones that are brown. So brown ones are the wood ones. This one is an ebony one. Okay, so this is ebony wood and then you just got your standard wood. I switched to the ebony one um, three years, four years ago maybe um, because I found the ebony one to be a bit lighter. It depends on the musician but um, I just felt ebony to be lighter than wood and um, I just really like the feel of the bow and it's, it's a nice, it's a nice one to play. Okay, so this is your, um, bow stick. Underneath, you have your bow hair. This is the part that going, that's going to play off the strings, okay? And this is actually made from horsetail. So they use the horsetail to create the bow hair. So you've got your bow stick, your bow hair. Up here at the top, you've got your bow tip, so tip your bow, bow stick, bow hair, bow tip, alright, bow tip. Now, we're going to look at the bottom of the bow next. Down here, these two here, this is the grip, okay? So this is where you grip the bow in place to hold it and keep it steady. Alright, because if you're all the way down here, you'd have absolutely zero control over it. Absolutely none at all. So you grip it up here. You spread your fingers out and you grip it up here. I'll go through that after, later on, um, how to hold that. So this is your grip here. So these two parts, the black bit and the gold bit, is your grip. Here, this black little bit here. This is called the frog. And here is the screw. So the frog kind of like keeps the hair there, kind of. The frog is attached to the end of the wood. So if you really loosened out the screw, this bit would actually come off. And that's where the hair comes up, attached onto there. Okay, so the screw then is used to loosen the bow hair. So when you're not playing it, you use the screw to loosen it off, to release the tension. You can see it's loosened off there. And then tighten it again. Okay, so that's what you use the screw for. So once more, we have the bow stick, bow hair, bow tip, uh, the grip, the frog, and the screw. And those are the parts of the bow. Okay, so that's the bow. Um, I'll go on to the fiddle next. So we've got our gorgeous little fiddle here. So for the fiddle, there is a lot of parts to the fiddle, as you can see, from top to bottom. So we'll start from the top and we'll work our way down. So up here, um, we have our scroll. So this is the scroll just here. And then we have our peg box in here. So we've got the scroll, the peg box, 
this is where the strings um, are, are wrapped around. So here we have the pegs which come into the peg box, which is where the strings are held. So the strings wrap around the pegs and the pegs sit into the peg box. You can see they're wrapped up inside there. Okay. And that tension is what tunes it. Okay, so you got your scroll, peg box, and your pegs. And your pegs. And then of course you have your strings here. Now if you look closely, can you see that there's a line just here? A dark, deep, kind of thick line. That is your nut. That's the nut. Okay, so if you can see the little grooves on the nut, there's four of them. That's where the strings sit to come down. Okay, so they comfortably sit in the little grooves on the knot to come along down. Okay, so we've got the scroll, uh, peg box, pegs, and the knot. Now we have our strings, of course, and then here, this bit here. So from your knot down to here, that's the neck. Okay, so from the knot down to here is the neck. That's where you place your hands to play and you move up and down. And then all the black bit that you see, all of that is the fingerboard. Okay, so all of this here is the fingerboard. So you've got your neck from the knot down to here, and then you have the fingerboard. The fingerboard is where you place your fingers to play. So like you can place them all the way up along here. So it's just the black bit is your fingerboard, but then here is the neck. Okay, so again we have the scroll, peg, pegs, peg box, uh, knot, string, uh, strings, um, the neck, the fingerboard. Okay, so now we're moving down along to here. So all the brown bit, it obviously makes up the instrument, that is the body. So that's called the body. Okay, so that's the body of the instrument, so that's the body. Next we have, if you see here, there's these little F-shape hollows. Those are the F-holes. That's where the sound is produced and that's where the sound comes out when you play. So you've got two of them, one on either side, so the sound is projected through there. Then you have the bridge. So again, there's little grooves on the bridge where your strings sit to come on down again. So we got the bridge and that again helps with the tuning and with the sound. So that also affects the sound. So sometimes someone might say, oh, my bridge of my violin or my fiddle was slightly off. I had to go and get it fixed. So then you go to a luthier who fixes your violins or repairs them. They then would adjust the bridge in a way that gets it back into its correct shape and that will fix the sound. Okay. And then coming down along then here, you've got, so look at these little pegs here. So if you can see there's tiny little pegs here, there's four of them. One for each string. These are fine tuners. Okay. Um, so they're your fine tuners. So up here you've got your pegs. These pegs are used for if your instrument is extremely out of tune. Say for example, if um, it's really old or if um, it hasn't been played in a long time, it's easy for the strings to go extremely out of tune, so then you'd use these to adjust them, to adjust the tuning, and then you'd use the small ones down here to get it um, perfect. So these are used, like, say, if it's a completely, if it's coming out completely crazy sound altogether, you use this to get it back into its original sound, and then you use these to get it exactly on the right note, okay? So these are used more often than up here. For me, anyway, I don't use these as much as I use these. So these are just, um, will be adjusted very slightly to get it perfect. Okay. And then here we've got our tailpiece. So this is the tailpiece and it comes down here and attaches to your chin rest. And this is your chin rest. Okay. And then this here just keeps the chin rest in place. Not too sure what it's called. But I do know it keeps your chin rest in place. Um, that's about all I know about that section. Um, but anyway, you've got your chin rest, tailpiece, fine tuners, bridge, strings, ethyl, body, um, fingerboard, neck, um, 
not. Um, pegs, peg board, um, peg holes, and scroll. Okay, and under here, if you can see, I have this little guy. This is a shoulder rest. So you have your chin rest for your chin, and then you've got your shoulder rest to for your shoulder. So I like to, you can get these in any music shop. Not too sure where I got this. Um, I've had it for a long time. Very comfortable, absolutely love it. It's a perfect size. I love the size of this one. Um, but if I remember where I got it, I will tell you in the next video. Not too sure where I got it. Um, but I might, I'll try and find that one out where I, wherever I got it. Um, but I like to use this because it helps to prop the instrument up on my shoulder. So it just sits here and props it up. And so, so it makes it easier because without it, it's, oh, it's really weird without it now, oh my gosh. Um, without it, you feel like it's a lot harder to keep it up, but well, I do anyway. So I like to use the chin, the shoulder rest to prop up the instrument on my shoulder to give that bit more of height and it's easier to hold it in place then. Okay. So that is all the bits of the instrument. Now, before I move on to how to hold the bow and the fiddle, I am going to show you the kind of rosin that I use and how to tune the instrument. Okay, so this is the rosin that I use. So it's natural dark rosin. Um, I got this in Pro Musica. Pretty sure. Yeah, I got it in Pro Musica. Um, there's loads of different rosins you can get, but I would highly recommend getting black rosin because I think it's very good. And it really helps to grip the bow onto the strings. So I will show you it there. It's slightly broken because I accidentally dropped it one day because I am clumsy. But I can still use it no problem. So that's my rosin. So that's it there. So you can see the big black line on it where I rosin it. So that's the rosin. So I would highly recommend. I know it's absolute state looking. Which are still easy to use, very effective. Um, I would 100% um, recommend using this rosin or getting it. If you can't get it, don't worry, you can use other ones, but I find this one to be super effective compared to the other ones that you can get. And oh yeah, I'm gonna show you there now how to rosin up the bow. So you've got your bow. You're gonna start from the bottom of your bow, so down by the frog. And you're going to, instead of moving your rosin all the time, keep your rosin in place if you want and just move your hand. What I was told to remember um, by one of my teachers, she said to me, every time you're rosin bow, pretend you're playing. So that gets you into the practice of moving your hand up and down. Okay. So you just go from the frog all the way up to the top. And back down again. Up and down. Don't go in patches, because you're going patches, you're obviously missing some of it. So it's just best to go down, up, down, up. Don't put on too much rosin either, because um, too much isn't too good. I remember um, I went to a luthier one time, and it was to, I think, change my hair, the hair on my bow, because um, my bow was second hand, it was very old hair. It was this bow, but the hair was very old, so I had to get it changed. And he was like, <clears throat> you have way too much rosin on here. You need to stop putting on so much rosin. I had way too much on. I mean, it was ridiculous the amount I had on. Um, I was crazy for the rosin. Like, I put so much on, like, every day. It was kind of a joke. But um, I don't do that anymore. I just put on what I need. And it helps to grip the bow to the strings. And it gets good sound out of it. So I would recommend getting this. But if you can't, don't worry. Just get um, whatever one you can get your hands on. The first fiddle I got um, came with uh, rosin. It was an orange one. And that was great too. I, there was no problem with the orange one. But um, then when I upgraded to my new one, I got this one then. Because I also broke my orange one. I'm terrible for dropping rosin. Like, I'm very bad at, at doing that. Anyways, tuning next. So this is the tuner that I have. I also got this one in Pro Musica as well, so shout out to Pro Musica. They are great for little bits and bobs. Um, they've got instruments, they've got books, music books, they've got 
tuners, rosin, the whole shebang. So I've got it all. They've got strings and everything. Um, so that's the one that I use. It's a Mosedo, M-U-S-E-D-O. So that's the tuner that I use. Um, I've had it for a long time and it's very good. Um, so I'm going to turn it on here. So I'm just going to pop it on there with the power boat button. So as you can see, it comes on. Now, um, it's set on V for me, so violin, but sometimes when you turn it on, it can start over here at C. So if you just press mode, so if you press the same button that you use to turn it on, so press it once, goes to G for guitar, again, B for whatever, B, bass, I don't know, uh, and press it again to go to B for violin. So that's the one that I use. And if you can see up here, it's 441. So that's the sound that you would tune it to. I usually tune it to 441, but you can also tune it to 440 if you want. Um, I used to tune it to 440 and then I found it just wasn't working at 440 because I kept having to tune it again and again. Um, so I like to tune it to 441 and that way I find it's more accurate. So if you want to fix the tuning of it, just press pitch, the pitch button, and that will change your volume or whatever it's called. Um, your pitch for it. So I need to get back there. 432, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 440. So some people can tune to 440, but I have to tune to 441. Okay, so that's the tuner. And now I'm going to clip it on here to the scroll. So up here at the top. Oops. Um, are you able to see that? Yes, you can. I hope. I'll put it there. We go. Okay, now you'll be able to see. Okay, so I'm going to start here at this low string and I'm going to pluck that. And as you can see, it's in tune. But I'm going to put it out of tune just so you can see how to tune it. So there. So you can see it's now out of tune. So to fix that, where am I going with this? There we go. So to fix that, so when I pluck it, you can see it's out of tune and the line is way down at the bottom. I want the line to move up and to go to the center, okay? So to use, do that, I'm going to turn this string here, or this string, this um, fine tuner here. So the G fine tuner. So this is my G string. So I'm going to turn that clockwise about two or three times. And I'm going to pluck it again. As you can see, I'm still not there. So I'm going to turn it again. almost there oh there we go so now as you can see it's gone green so almost green so when it gets to green you know that you're in tune it's gonna go in and out there there we go so when it's on green you know you're in tune okay and it's the same for the others so D is in tune A is in tune and E is not in tune. Oopsies. It's a little bit off, so I'm going to go anti clockwise because it's a little too high. Oof. Still too high. No, it's too low now. Oh, gotta love that. Nope, wrong string. The A string used to be the one to give me a problem, but now it's the E string. There's always one string. Still a bit off. Almost there. Ah, there we go. Got it. Okay, so that's the fourth string. So I'm not going to put them all out of tune, but you get the idea. So if it's too sharp, if it's too high, you're going to go anti-clockwise with your fine tuner. If it's too flat and if it's too low, you're going to go clockwise with your fine tuner to get it up to tune. Okay, so E. My goodness, this old E string is probably going to be the death of me someday. There's always one string, I swear. It's either A string or E string. Okay, we're back in again, and no one's wrong with A. D. And G. I don't know what's doing there. Okay, so if you can see. Oh, I'm just not going to go to that E string. I don't know if you can see it. So you can see it goes with the letter. I know it's upside down, but 
So 2A, so that's my second string. So 1, it goes 1E. So that's my first string. 2A, that's my second string. 3D, that's my third string. 4G, that's my fourth string. So it's E is 1, G is 2, C, A is 2, D is 3, and G string is 4, okay? So that's how you tune it. So you keep you keep twisting it until it goes green. Uh, twist it carefully, because the thing with the fiddle is um, twist it too much, and they snap easily. Trust me, I've been there. It's not good. Um, that's a story for another day. Um, but... Twist it carefully when you're doing it, very carefully, because you don't want them to snap. Okay, so that's that, I think. So I've gone through the parts of the bow, parts of the fiddle, um, how to rosin the bow, how to tune the fiddle. Final thing I'm going to go through for now is how to hold your uh, fiddle, and then I'll go on to holding the bow. So we're going to hold the fiddle first. So you're going to, I'm using my chin rest. Or my shoulder rest, but if you don't have a shoulder rest, don't worry about it. Up to you if you want to get a shoulder rest or not. Um, you can still use it perfectly fine without a shoulder rest. It's just I find it more comfortable to have one. So I'm going to place it here on this part of my shoulder. I'm just going to go there with it. And I'm going to place my chin on the chin rest. Hence why it's called a chin rest. So, most important part about playing the fiddle wrist must be out at all times. If it's in here, one, you won't be able to play your notes properly. Two, you will get a severe pain coming down your wrist and it will be absolutely awful. And three, it's just not going to be good overall. Okay, it won't sound good, it won't feel good, it won't be comfortable. So work on making sure your wrist is out. You will feel it will be sore for a while. Um, the camera just shakes. Uh, you will feel it will be sore for a while, but that comes with practice. Um, it, you will feel the strain, but the more you practice it, the more um, used your hand will get to it, okay? Um, so work on that and kind of think of it as there's like something here and then if you put it in, you're going to get picked by it like a thorn. That's what I was told. Um, pretend there's a thorn there. If you put your wrist in, you're going to get picked by a thorn. It worked. Clearly. Um, just try, do your best to get it out there. Practice getting it out. Um, I wouldn't say to spend hours doing it because hours is just going to put a lot of strain. Um, 5, 10, 15 minutes a day even just picking it up, holding it out and then playing your open strings, which I'll go through in, um, in the next video. But um, just practice holding it out, even 5 minutes a day, even just hold it out for five minutes and just practice holding it out like that because after a time your muscle in your hand will get used to the position it's supposed to go in and it will naturally go in that position because you've trained it to okay so it won't go in that position overnight but it will eventually when you work on it okay so that's the way that you hold your fiddle very important to work on that wrist now, let's look at the bow. I must say I'm not the best at teaching people how to hold the bow, but I will do my best by showing you. And hopefully you'll be able to pick it up. And we'll go from there then. So, this is where knowing the parts of your bow comes in handy because you'll have to be able to know where to position your fingers. So we're going to get your thumb first. And your thumb is going to come down by the frog. So it's going to come down. Where am I going with this? Um, it's just going to come down here. Okay, so you're just going to rest your thumb there. All right, so you're just going to rest it there where there's the little groove. It's perfect to place your thumb just there. You don't need to dig it in there or anything. That doesn't need to. You don't need to do that. Just rest it just there. Okay. So your thumb's going to just sit there. Now, once your thumb is in position, you're going to get your the rest of your fingers and you're going to curl it around. Okay, so you're just going to curl like that. Okay, so just curl it around like that. So, as you can see, my fingers have just gone into the position because I've been playing it for ages. So, I, my fingers are just naturally trained to go into that position. 
but if you're first starting off you probably can see your fingers might be down here or they might just be clustered together don't worry because we're going to work on that now and I'm going to show you how to get them into the right position okay but if you're like this and you're playing like this you have absolutely zero control over the bow and like if, even if you can see like my pinky just gone back into the shape it should be your pinky kind of controls spreads out the weight kind of when it's in position like here your first three fingers kind of grip it and then your pinky kind of stop it from being heavy kind of if that makes sense so like without your pinky the weight has gone towards the bow the bow has taken the weight but when you have your pinky on there it pushes it up so it keeps the weight it evens out the weight with your four fingers okay so let's start with your first finger so we've got your um bow your your bow your thumb in place you're going to take your first finger and if you remember here's the grip that we spoke about earlier you're going to take your first finger and bring it up here just by the gold part part of the grip so you're going to place your first finger just there then you're going to take your second finger and place it on the grip on the black part third finger just a little bit below and then your pinky is just going to rest the furthest down okay just around by the frog area just here you can see it's just a little bit just above the frog towards the end of the frog so you're just going to rest your pinky there and your pinky is going to what's going to control the weight and prevent the bow from tipping too far forward or anything like that okay it's going to help you move the bow in whatever way you need to okay so that's how you hold it um i hope that helps so you've got your thumb there and you've got your pinky or you not your pinky you've got the rest of your fingers just here and they're going to kind of have they're not going to be up straight they're going to have kind of a tilt to them because at the end of the day you're going like this and if you're like this you can't really do anything so you're going to have a bit of a tilt so you're just going to tilt them a little bit like that so it's more your first finger that you're tilting and the others will kind of follow okay so i hope that helps and i hope that makes sense so if you practice that your fingers will naturally go into that position then because you have trained them to so again it's always about training your hands to go into a certain position when you're starting off okay if you don't train them they won't do it they're not going to do it themselves you've got to show them how so again you're going to position your fiddle under your chin wrist out fingers like this onto the string and that is the position that you need to be on for playing the instrument okay and that is it so that's the position for your bow this is the position for the fiddle wrist out under your chin and i just use a shoulder rest to help prop it up and that is it so we've gone through everything there now that we need to go through so we've gone through all the parts of your bow all the parts of the fiddle um the rosin that i use how to rosin your bow the tuner that i've used how to tune your bow and how to hold the bow and how to hold the fiddle okay so in the next video i will go through um the notes i'll go through each of the strings so the open strings and then I'll go through each of the finger positions on the on each of the strings. Okay, so we'll start at our low string, we'll go all the way up to there, our high string, and we'll go through each of them, and that'll be it then. So we've gone through. So this is the first part of our basic lesson. So the next basic lesson will be just um, your notes and where to position your fingers. Okay, so I hope that has helped, and I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.